Hello everybody. Today I would love to talk to you about constructions and some tips that and one activity that I use to really help you get this off on the right foot. My name is Jeanette Stein. I'm the creator of HighSchoolMathTeachers.com and I love bringing you tips for teaching in your high school math classroom. So today we're going to talk about constructions and this one activity can seem very simple, but it's going to allow some really important things to go on. First of all, you're going to be able to assess that hand um, coordination and fine motor skills of your students. It's going to allow you to reinforce vocabulary that they should know from middle school, but not just uh, the diameters, twice the radius, but actually look at a picture and be able to identify it. Um, some kids are going to be very good at that, and some will have forgotten for a bit. So it'll be great to remind them. And three, it builds a lot of spatial sense. And so this is a fantastic activity. I usually like to start um, and do it for a whole day to really stretch them and give them time to be challenged. Um, and the other thing I like to do for about a month ahead of time is all those bad copies that end up in the recycle bin, I grab those. And I love to start the class off by letting them know that there will be lots and lots of mistakes. And that's okay. That's what today's for. We're going to learn how to do this. So I bought this really um, cheap, cheap compass um, up at the local Rite Aid up in town because I didn't want to wait for Amazon to deliver a better one to me so that we could get started. And I can't believe I didn't have a better one around. I think uh, with six kids in the house, they have all disappeared. So sometimes using um, a less than perfect device though will help your students to feel much better about it as well. So what I like to do is I tell them that the radius has to be less than one fifth of the width of or the height of the paper depending on how they put it on their desk. So I have created the radius is probably about an inch and a half on my paper and I put it definitely in the middle and I draw the best circle I can with the kids. So I like to, I'm going to go really quick on this because I know you know how to use this. I always give them lots of good tips. Like I said, this one is a little cruddy, which is great because we can talk about some of those things I look for. And then what I have them do, sorry, the camera is adjusting to my hand and then the paper and the hand and the paper, is we're going to go around and this is basically the construction for how to create a hexagon. And once I do that first circle, I go to the intersection. Now I like to remind the students, um, we're going to draw, use our straight edge. Um, I have an old ruler here, um, but we're gonna use the straight edge only where the intersections are. So, and we're gonna go around this first circle. If the kids are having a hard time spatially seeing which one was the first circle, sometimes I even have them trace it with a pen that they may have at their desk um, before we get started with the rest of the circles. I'm trying to draw this a little darker, but because it's such a cheap, um, <laughs> such a cheap compass, if I push down any harder, um, the plastic stretches. So when, um, once I show the kids how to do this and they're doing it, I go around and I look for those spots in the middle. Let's see if I move my hand, if it'll focus a little bit better. There we go. Um, it, you see my overlap there. That's where I tried to make it darker. Uh, it made the radius larger. So this is really going to give me some great places to start looking at my students and how well, um, their fine motor skills are. But it's also going to give my students who, um, a lot of times, the students who are really good at some things will not be good with this. And then other, see how it did not quite come together. It should come together perfectly. If I had a better compass, this would come together perfectly. What I tell the kids is, if there's a gap, go for the middle. So we're going to go for the middle, and hopefully it kind of lines up a little bit better. And this is... It's kind of funny because this is the worst one I've had, probably because I'm talking as I'm doing it. But all of this overlap makes it less precise. Now, this is a great activity. I have them do this two or three times just so that I can assess who's got the fine motor skills and to let them practice without feeling like a failure. So it's really important that we don't start constructions on negative attitude, that they like it when they come in tomorrow and we start talking about 
bisecting a line and all of that. So, but once we do this, what I have them do is create different shapes based on where these intersections are or creating their own intersections. So for example, I took my straight edge and I connected the intersection here and the intersection along the original circle. And so I just did that all the way around. I was able to get this star. Now this one took a little bit um, more finagling. What I had to do to get this little line with the jagged here, um, the jagged here, is I had to draw a line from the center of my circle, and good thing this worked out better, up until the intersection on the outside. So once I did that, now I have a new intersection point that I could use here. There was an amazing poster I used to use that came out probably, it was old when I got it from the teacher who left my classroom 20 years ago. And I looked everywhere on Google. Um, if you look at my computer right now, I've got like 18 tabs open because I was looking for that poster. Um, when I switched rooms one year, it got put in the trash. And I understand it was falling apart, but it was so cool because it was like this. All it was was this simple six circle. And it was all shapes that you could create from those, from that um, constructed a hexagon process. And so it was all connecting things. You can create pentagons. You can create other things. So I love to challenge my students. We'll put them all up. I believe on that original poster, I wish I knew the exact number, but I believe there were over 30, 30 different designs that you could come in. Some of them were as simple as, um, let's see if I've got a marker here. Some of them were as simple as this little flower here, you know, that you can see in the middle etc. And some of them were very, very complex. So let's go back. The one that um, I always would erase uh, the lines in the back. So one, this, we're going to use these here. And what we can do is actually create a box. And the kids actually found this kind of cool that we could create a 3D box from, um, from this. So here's the top of my box. Here's the front of my box. And the sides. Now, I don't know that I would show my students this right away. What I do is once they get pretty good and I've paired them up with some of the kids who really struggle, some of the kids have done this, they should have done this in middle school. But we know the reality is if you've got kids coming from a lot of different middle schools, some of them will have done this and unfortunately some of them will have not done this. And so what we can do with this is once they get good at drawing that hexagon, do they see the hexagon in the middle, that they've constructed a hexagon? Do they see some of these shapes? And I would create some of these shapes for them, and then I would tell them there are 20 other designs. Let's see how many we can come up with, and maybe let them work in groups of three or four, because every time they do a design, they need to construct this original six um, circle shape here, which gives them lots and lots of practice with those fine motor skills. It gives you a chance to assess, maybe there's a kid who's super frustrated and needs that, you know, that, that tool that you keep in your desk drawer that will really allow them to um, kind of have an advantage that doesn't move. I had one, I had like a set of 10, I spent some of my budget one year and just bought 10 that were really good. The rest were crappy, and guess what? The students could handle that. But I had a couple students who would get frustrated. Sometimes my special ed students who don't deal as well with failure, you know, they already struggle so much. Let's give them a little advantage, and I would kind of hold out and keep those 10 and give them to certain students once I realized who those people were. The thing is, I had to do this activity to figure out because people who were necessarily who I thought would be good at this 
weren't the ones who were. And so I really needed this time to assess, give positive reinforcement, really build them up so that when they come in to do constructions, they really enjoy it. And that really made a huge difference for me as I was moving through this unit. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. Excuse my dog who just got very, very excited. But I hope you enjoy this idea and this strategy for working with your students. And if you want to pop over to the blog post and look at some of the other tools and resources that we have available, we would love to see you there. I'll talk to you soon. Again, this is Jeanette Stein with HighSchoolMathTeachers.com.